Hi students, how are you? Hope you all are fine. Good. Today, in this video lesson for 12th standard, we are going to learn from unit 4, vocabulary section. The topic for discussion today is idioms, phrasal verbs, compound verbs. Let us learn them one by one. Okay, as you know, what is an idiom? Can you define an idiom? And what are the uses of idioms? Right, we shall learn them one by one. An idiom is an expression with a figurative meaning that differs from its literal meaning. And why do we need idioms? We need idioms because they were coined to communicate a specific and usually quite precise meaning for which there is no exact verb. Okay, how does an idiom help us? Idioms help us say many things with just a few words. They help us enrich our language. Idioms are often used by native speakers. Do you know, in English alone, it is estimated that there are more than 25,000 idiomatic expressions. Okay, do you know the different types of idioms? Many are based on verbs, prepositional phrases, noun phrases and sayings or proverbs. Okay, let us learn them one by one. First, we shall start from the type of idioms based on verbs. Look at the example here. You have a picture. Take advantage of something. Yes. What is the meaning? Make good use of something. Okay. Here, we could see the verb used in this idiom and next one prepositional phrases here we have two examples look at the first example in that case it's a idiom in that case what's the meaning for that idiom used to say what you will do in a specific situation and this idiom in that case it come under prepositional phrases Look at the next one, example 2. In charge of somebody or something. Look at the meaning. Having control or command of somebody or, or something. And this is the example for prepositional phrase. Look at the next type of idiom, which is noun phrases. Look at the example here. A piece of cake. And as we know, every idiom has an idiomatic meaning. And here, this idiom, a piece of cake, does not refer to a single piece of cake. But here, it means a thing that is easy to do. Maybe drawing is a piece of cake for my friend. Okay, let's move to the next type. Sayings or Proverbs. Look at the example. Better late than never. Yeah. What is the meaning for this idiom? Better late than never. The meaning is, it is better to arrive late than not. Okay. We have other type of idiom. That is, which is a fixed phrase with the key word and or. Look at the example here. We have two examples. Look at the first one. Bright and early. Here this is the idiom. 
bright and early. What's the meaning for this idiom? That is early in the morning. Look at the next picture. Right. Now, come to the example. More or less. So, here the idiom is more or less. And the meaning for this idiom is almost or approximately. Right. In these two examples, we could find idioms with keywords and and in the second idiom we have or. Okay. We shall see some of the idioms that are given in our textbook on page number 117. Look at the idiomatic expressions with their meanings. Right. Let us have the first one. Wait for the dust to settle. What is the meaning here? To wait for a situation to become clear or certain. You could see the picture there. And how to use that in the sentence? Let the dust settle before we decide what to do. Okay, shall we move to the next one? Right. Look at this sentence and this picture. And here the idiom is get all your ducks in a row or have all your ducks in a row. The meaning for this idiom is to have made all the preparations needed to do something. Yes. Or the meaning can be to have made all the preparations needed to be well organized. Yes. And we can use this idiom in a sentence like be sure to get your ducks in a row before you start a work. Okay, look at the next idiom fetch and carry for somebody. And the meaning here is to do a lot of little jobs for somebody as if you were their servant. In the picture you could see a dog carrying newspaper. Right. Look at the example sentence. The brave Sherpas fetch and carry materials for the climbers. Yes. So here the idiom fetch and carry refers to to do a lot of little jobs for somebody as if you are a servant. But Sherpas are not servant, they are brave people, they work a lot without them. No mountaineer could climb Everest. Let's move to the next one. Do the math. Here the idiom is do the math. The meaning for this idiom is to think carefully about something before doing it. So that you know all the relevant facts or figures. Right. Look at that picture. An ant is maybe thinking something. Right, look at the sentence. The team does the math carefully so as to reach the summit successfully. Okay, let's move to the next one. Round the corner. The meaning for the idiom round the corner is very near or close by. Look at the picture here. A gal may be nearing her house. And the sentence for this. My new place is just around the corner. Okay. I think you have learned five idioms from our textbook that is on page number 117. And again, we shall learn few more idioms on page number 117. We have two idioms on the right side. The first one, the icing on the cake. Here, the icing on the cake has 
a different idiomatic expression. You have two pictures. Icing on the cake does not refer to ice cake or making the cake with the creamy ice. Right. Here the real idiomatic expression is something extra and not essential but is added to make something even better. Look at the example, you will understand clearly. Our headmistress not only promised us to take us for an excursion but also announced that on return we would get a holiday. It was like the icing on the cake. So it was an extra information and that's why we use the icing on the cake in this situation. Moving to the next one, break the ice. Here the idiomatic expression is to make people more relaxed especially at the beginning of the meeting. The idiom break the ice does not refer to breaking a ice but in a meeting or in a large gathering in order to make the people relaxed, the chairperson may ask few questions to break the ice, to make the members relax before starting a meeting. Look at the sentence here. The conference room was silent. Though packed, the chairman introduced an interactive session to break the ice. Okay, you are thorough with the icing on the cake as well as break the ice. Okay students, here are some more idioms on travel. The fourth unit, you have learnt the lesson, the summit. It's an adventure, it's a travelogue. So here we are going to learn few more idioms on travel. Look at this picture and look at the idiom. Float one's boat. Okay, the meaning for this idiom is to make someone happy, excited or interested in something. And how can you use that in a sentence? I don't really want to go to China to float his boat. And at present it's difficult. Right. Let's move to the next one. A mile a minute. Here the meaning is very fast. And how can you use this idiom in a sentence? He walks a mile a minute. He walks very fast. Moving to the next one. Highways and byways. What is the meaning for this idiom? It is major and minor roadways. And how to express that in a sentence? All through the summer, he roamed highways and byways. Okay, let us have some more idioms on travel. Look at the idioms on your left side and their meanings on your right side. The first one, bad news travel fast. The meaning is bad news circulate quickly. Going to the next one. Off the beaten track. The meaning is little known or in a remote area. Going for the third one. In the same boat. The meaning here is same unpleasant or difficult situation. Look at the next one. Drive up the wall. The meaning is someone drives you to the wall. Maybe someone who irritates you. Going for the last one. Hit the road. The meaning is to begin one's journey. And here you have all the idioms based on travel. Try to write your own sentences 
for this idioms okay students let's move to the next topic that is phrasal verbs we have learnt about phrasal verbs what is a phrasal verb a phrasal verb is a verb that is made up of a main verb together with an adverb or a preposition okay let's start from here we have many phrasal verbs on page number 180 let us learn them one by one with examples look at the first one turn on here the verb turn and the preposition on is combined to form a phrasal verb turn on the meaning for turn on is to start or to open or to point something let us see the usage look at the first example is your computer turned on look at the second one turn on the tap will you here it is used to open look at the next one for pointing something the trial turned on medical evidence right so here turn on can be used in three ways in, in three meanings to start open point okay moving to the next one take over take over can be used to mean take lead or begin to control look at the example here he took over the captainship from him look at the next sentence government is taking over all schools so here take over can be used in two ways going to the next one set off this phrasal verb can be used to mean to start a journey to make something explode or cause something to operate okay look at the three examples the first one to start a journey yes the first example we set off journey early in the morning look at the second one someone set off fireworks in front of the temple look at the third one opening the door will set off the alarm All right are you clear with the three different usages of the phrasal verb set off okay let's move to the next one put off put off means postpone or delay or cancel look at the two examples the first one we have to put off our plans due to covid 19 look at the second sentence it is too late to put them off now okay students you have learned four different types of phrasal verbs right let's have a match few more examples connected with traveling and all these three are taken from your textbook on page number 118 just match with the meanings look at the first three examples see off see off means to say goodbye to someone maybe at a airport or a railway station and the next one stop over stop over means to stay at a place for a short period going to the next one third one set off set off means to start off or begin a journey okay students now you have to try yourself we have four examples here get in get off get on and get away okay what is the first phrasal verb get in and find out the meaning for this phrasal verb get in 
enter a bus or train, etc. Get off. Leave a bus or train, etc. Get on. Arrive inside train or bus. And what does get away mean? To go away from home for a vacation. Okay, check the next one. We have two phrasal verbs based on the verb check. Check in, check out. The meaning for check in? Yes, good. Arrive and register at airport or hotel. And what is the meaning for the second one? Check out. Pay the bill when leaving a hotel. Okay, students. Let's have a few more phrasal verbs and their meanings based on travel. These are not in a textbook. We have discussed all the phrasal verbs based on travel in your textbook on page number 118. Here are a few more phrasal verbs based on travel. Hold up. The meaning for hold up is delay when traveling. The second one, take off. When a plane departs. The third one, drop off. Take someone to a place and leave them there. Going for the fourth one, pick up. Let someone get into your car or your own vehicle. Moving to the fifth one. Speed up. The meaning here is increase speed. And the sixth one, look around to explore what is near your area. And the seventh one, hurry up, rush and not waste the time. And the eighth one, go back, which means return to a place or an activity. And the last one, look forward, something that is going to happen in the future. Right, so here are the phrasal verbs that mean about travel. Okay, let's move to the other topic, the last topic, compound words. What is a compound word? A compound word is formed by combining two or three words to make a new word. We have three types of compound words. One is closed compound word, the second one open compound word and third one hyphenated compound word. Let's learn them one by one. The first one closed compound words. Closed compound words are nothing but they are formed when two fully independent or unique words that are combined to create a new word. Here the two words does not have space. There is no space in between the words. For example, we combine grand and mother to create the closed form word grandmother. And we have many examples. Snowball, mailbox, sunflower, moonlight, Fireman. Okay, what is a open compound word? Right, open compound words have a space between the smaller words. Even though the words seem separate, when we read them together, they have a new meaning. For example, full moon is an open compound word. When we read the smaller separate words, full and moon together, they have a new unique meaning. And here we have space between the words. Look at the examples. Post office, ice cream, living room, newly formed. So these are the examples for open compound words. Moving to the next one, hyphenated compound words. Hyphenated common words are formed by using a hyphen, that is a small dash used to connect words together. For example, merry go round. You could see the picture, merry go round. 
And the next example, mother-in-law, twofold. Here we have hyphen between the words. One important rule to remember is that in most cases, a compound adjective is hyphenated if placed before the noun, it modifies, but not if placed after the noun. Here we have two examples. Look at the first example. A long term solution. We have a hyphen in between the two words long term. And we don't use hyphen in other occasion. For example, look at the first example. This is not a good solution for the long term. Moving to the next example. An up to date user guide. Here we use hyphen, but we don't use hyphen in this type of sentence. Look at the second sentence. This user guide is not up to date. We have many hyphenated compound words in our book. Right. Some of the compound words from the text of your page number 118. We have eight compound words. Icefall knife edge, windproof, sleeping bags, halfway, never ending, partly full, Isaacs. Right. Just try to find out these common words from the pros, the summit. You have to find out where, in which paragraph, these phrasal verbs are found. For example, you could find this common word sleeping bag that is the fourth one you could find this on the paragraph number 27 of the pro section the summit likewise you have to find out this common words from the pro section the summit and how it is used in the sentences okay students we have a few more common words based on mountains and look at this one iceberg it is a hyphenated compound word what does it mean an extremely large mass of ice floating in the sea look at the next one ice cap yes look at this picture it is a layer of ice permanently covering parts of the earth especially our own North and South Poles. Thank you students. Keep learning. Keep reading. Don't waste your time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.